Today we're continuing with our practicing peacemaking. Last week we talked about how we can be peacemakers with our actions with our friends and now we're looking a little bit further beyond our school into our wider community. You might not know but last week marked National Homelessness Week where we recognize the struggles that lots of people face because they actually don't have a warm bed or shelter to call their own, to call home each and every night. So rather than hearing just from me today, I actually have interviewed a wonderful man by the name of Nathaniel Sparai or Nat Sparai, who works in the local Toowoomba community at a place called Base Services. And Nat's going to share with us a bit more about himself what he does, why he thinks it's important, and what we can do to be peacemakers in our community. I'd like to pay my respects to the traditional custodians of this land on which we meet, the Jagara and the Gaibal people, and pay my respects to elders past, present, and emerging. I'd also like to say thank you to Year 4H and Prep D for helping us out with readings and prayers today. The book of Proverbs is a book of wise sayings, things to live by and to listen to really carefully. And the book has a lot to say about what we need to do when we see and hear lonely, lost and helpless people. This reading comes from the book of Proverbs, chapter 31, verses 8 and 9. Speak up for people who cannot speak for themselves. Protect the rights of all who are helpless. Speak for them and be a rightness judge. Protect the rights of the poor and needy. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right, now, can you tell us a bit about yourself and what Base Services is? Yeah, cool. Base Services' main program is our soup kitchen, which we feed people and we work with people facing difficult circumstances such as homelessness, drug addiction, family breakdown and mental health. And we're operating five days a week. We serve a nutritious meal, but it's more than a meal. And a little about myself, um, I've been working at base services now for over 20 years. So I've been working with homeless people for that long. And I've seen a lot of people um, get help because of their situation that they've um, found themselves into through base services. And it's just a highlight to know that I'm making a difference. But even serving somebody a meal, um, it just, really satisfies you and because they come in hungry and they leave full. Um, do you, can you tell us a bit more, like how many people in Toowoomba every day have to deal with homelessness and yeah. um, those issues? So every day around six to 800 people in Toowoomba have to deal with um, the struggles of not having their own home. Mm. And you just imagine um, not having your own home, I'm pretty sure um, most of you slept in your own bed last night, um, had breakfast, your mum or dad drove you to school, and really we don't have much to complain about. And why are you so passionate about helping the homeless? Well, I'm a Christian and I really believe that um, God, um, all throughout his word, tells us to look after the poor, to look after the broken, the lost, um, the weak. and you know, we, we serve people in our city that are even the most vulnerable. Also, people are lonely. Um, I really believe that God particular, particularly cares for the lonely and also the unloved. Um, you know, I really believe that God loves the unloved and we should too. And, you know, the world might look down on them, but we, we have a place where, you know, they feel careful. And so I, I really believe that, but I also believe that I'm motivated to do this because I was once homeless and because of my experience of being in a homelessness for um, around the age of 15 to 25, um, yeah, I just, I feel like I understand. Thank you. Um, last question mm -hmm. is, how do you think we can um, our school community, we've mm -hmm. got about 600 kids and is it individuals, how do you think we can make a difference 
um, to our wider community yep. by caring for those people. Like you said, God cares for the lonely yeah. and the needy. I, yeah. I think that, you know, start building a relationship with um, an organisation that you can kind of like adopt. Like it could be a nursing home, it could be a, where you write letters or send food or, it, or have visits, or it could be a soup kitchen where maybe the year six students um, can come and, and serve one day. You could make biscuits and, and all that for our soup kitchen and bring them down. You could write everyone a letter. Um, Christmas time, we're always looking forward to people to write something in our Christmas hampers, that homeless hampers that we give out. So there's many, many, many things you can do. So good to hear from Nat Sparai from The Base Services. Now we're going to move into a time of prayer. It's always a great time and a really important reminder to stop and to pray, to give thanks to God for all the wonderful things that we have and to ask him for help as we walk on the road of being peacemakers. Dear God, thank you for today. Thank you for our school and our town. Thank you that you love us. Give us a happy heart every day so that we can be peacemakers like Jesus. Amen. Dear God, please help us to care for others. We are sorry for when we forget people who are lonely and lost. Please help us to keep all people safe and warm. Give us open hearts and warm homes to show your love. Amen. As we finish today, you might be wondering, Reverend Zoe, we used to give food to the St. Luke's Parish Pantry. We used to bring food for chapel. And we've heard today from Nat Spirai from Base Services. And you're right, we did used to give food to St. Luke's Parish Pantry. And the great news is, is we still do and we still can. Now, some of you in years three to six might not be used to it anymore. You might not know because it often happens in prep to two. I am actually going to encourage everyone in primary to make a contribution to food for chapel for the St. Luke's Parish Pantry if you can. So every Thursday when we have chapel, I'm gonna bring some buckets to your classrooms and you can drop off some non-perishable items, some tins of food, some cereal, things like that, long life milk, and we're gonna take them down to St. Luke's because that is a reminder that we already are peacemakers. We already have been helping our community, but we can continue to do so and we can think of other ways that we can help as well. So ask mum or dad or your house parent if you can grab um, some help in making a contribution to our parish pantry, our chapel food and we will see what wonderful things we can do together as a school community for our wider community. I hope that this has given you some incredible food for thought. And like I said before, I know we already have some great examples of being peacemakers in our community, and I can't wait to hear your suggestions of what we can continue doing or try doing as we look to be peacemakers. So wherever you go today, whatever you do, whatever your day holds, I pray that God will be with you, that he will remind you that he brings peace, that peace comes in kindness and love and forgiveness that we show each other and that we can be peacemakers with each other, with our friends, with our family and with the wider community. It doesn't need to be big. It doesn't need to be expensive. It doesn't need to be flashy. It just needs to come from the heart and to show people that God loves them. We know that we are loved by God. Bless you all, everyone. It's so good to see you. I'll see you again.